What is the Bitcoin bull market multiplier effect? Today, we're going to break down how it works and why it leads to some absolutely astronomical price predictions for this bull run, like millions of dollars per Bitcoin. Now, we've already seen some decent price moves this year, but if this multiplier effect theory is true, we haven't seen nothing yet. With the ETF approval imminent, institutions piling in, and the halving just around the corner, we'll cover how this bull market could be one of perpetually increasing god candles that absolutely melts faces. We'll also touch on how the infamous gamma squeeze plays into all this. Do you have enough Bitcoin? Let's dive in. What's up, my fellow revolutionaries? I'm Hurley, and today we're talking all about the Bitcoin bull market multiplier effect. What is it? Simply put, it means a dollar going into Bitcoin translates to much more than a dollar added to the market cap of Bitcoin. It's actually several multiples more. And the reason why is due to the unique properties of Bitcoin as an asset. The fact is, the world has never seen an asset with finality of supply until Bitcoin. When gold goes up in price, it encourages more mining operations to dig for more gold, thus increasing gold supply above the average 1-2% to per year. With Bitcoin, more demand does not equal more supply. Unless, of course, the price moves up high enough to entice holders to sell some of the precious stack. We'll discuss how the supply dynamics are important to this multiplier in a minute, and how they lead to the famous parabolic moves in the Bitcoin price. But first, speaking of parabolic moves, have you seen the Bitcoin hash rate lately? Marathon Digital Holdings, which is traded on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol Mara, is the largest and most technologically advanced publicly traded Bitcoin miner, as well as one of the most energy efficient. They are also the second largest holders of Bitcoin among publicly traded companies in North America. Marathon's mission is to enhance the Bitcoin network by sustainably increasing the amount of computational power or hash rate that helps make Bitcoin the world's most decentralized and secure monetary network. Now back to the multiplier. To understand it, we have to go back to the height of the last bull market. In March 2021, Bank of America Research came up with a paper titled Bitcoin's Dirty Little Secrets. The report was an attempt to discredit the asset and dissuade investors from buying, but some data in there was actually bullish as hell. They concluded that a net inflow into Bitcoin of $93 million may result in a 1% price rise. They also noted that it would take 20 times that injection of money to move the price of gold the same amount. Looking at the market cap of Bitcoin at the time of the research, this works out to 118x multiple on the market price for every dollar that comes in. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a big reason why we get parabolic price moves in bull markets. Fast forward to 2023, just last month, the Bitcoin market cap jumped up $57 billion in 30 minutes on the fake ETF approval tweet by Cointelegraph. Now, it's highly unlikely that a fake tweet translated into much more than half a billion in buy pressure, never mind double the inflows of the entire 2021 bull market like the increase in market cap would suggest. This leads me to believe that the multiplier effect is very real and increasing as we begin to enter the bull market with the hype around these ETFs. To help explain why this multiplier effect happens, we first need to understand Bitcoin's supply dynamics. The Rational Root recently did a talk at Bitcoin Amsterdam where he laid out these supply dynamics with some great charts. Here's a clip. So if we plot the circulating supply of Bitcoin, we can see that we currently have 19 and a half million coins in circulation. Now we know that there is a hard cap of 21 million coins. So the remaining million and a half coins will be mined over the next 100 years. Now we can divide the supply into two categories. One is the active supply and the other one is the non-participating supply. Well, why is it non-participating? It's because those coins don't move on chain. And so many of these coins from this non-participating supply come from this 2009, 2010 era where Bitcoin didn't really have a price yet. A lot of these coins are lost. And this also includes the, the million coins that belong to Satoshi who are very unlikely to move. So this non-participating supply does not actively take part in Bitcoin's price discovery. So we're going to zoom in to that active supply. Instead of having 19 and a half million coins previously, we now are down to 12 million coins that are kind of in circulation that are actively responsible for Bitcoin's price discovery. If we think of the hodlers of Bitcoin, we can actually divide that active supply further into the following two categories. There's two main ways to measure uh, HODL behavior on chain, and one is through time. So by looking at the age of coins, so in particular, if coins are 
uh, old, they, they are likely to belong to these long-term holders. Another way is to look at spending behavior. So we can identify the entities that are on chain and those entities have a spending behavior. So if an entity spends less than 25% of their holdings, they are classified as illiquid and they are very likely an entity that is a, a hodler. Now, so we can divide this supply further into the two categories, illiquid supply and the uh, supply that is available for trade that remains. So let's now look at this available supply for trade that's left. And we can actually see that since the third halving, the available supply for trade that remains, that is shrinking. Pretty wild to see it laid out visually like that, right? So just because 19.5 million Bitcoin have been issued currently, doesn't mean 19.5 million are available for sale. As Root lays out, that number of available coins for trade is below 5 million and dropping. Since the price of an asset is set at the margin of supply, not the total supply, and the marginal supply of Bitcoin is below 5 million and dropping, we can see how we get that increasing multiplier effect as hype and demand increases and supply decreases. So you can imagine once we hit the peak of the hype phase of this cycle, with ETF issuers buying to meet demand for their products, which some estimate will be around 200 billion in inflows in the first three years of the ETF's trading. Then we add retail inevitably following with FOMO buying, and then we account for the peak bull market multiplier, and we may just see absolute God candles this cycle. We're talking the price doubling in a 30 minute window. Now it's important to note that this multiplier works both ways and is changing all the time based on supply and demand dynamics in the market. The greater the demand at any given time, the greater the multiple. During bear markets, the multiple exists to the downside on any large sell pressure. This explains Bitcoin's extreme volatility in a nutshell and is the main reason why you should never trade the hardest asset humanity has ever seen during its early monetization process. You will get wrecked. Buy, hold long-term and chill. Now, where does the infamous gamma squeeze fit into all of this? A gamma squeeze in Bitcoin happens when there is a rapid increase in price caused by market makers buying spot to hedge physically settled call options. When the gamma squeeze hits, it can move the price tens of thousands of dollars in a very short time span. Like we saw when Bitcoin teleported from 30K to 35K last week, which was a small example of what's in store as more and more market makers use options trading on Bitcoin and need to buy in to hedge their positions. Alex Thorne explains the gamma squeeze and options markets on the latest Swan Signal from this week. So check it out to learn more, and perhaps I'll cover this topic in more detail in a future video. So the question remains, do you have enough Bitcoin? Are you prepared for perhaps the most parabolic bull run in Bitcoin's history? What are your thoughts on the bull market multiplier? Will it be 118x like Bank of America Research suggested in 2021? Or will demand this cycle increase it even more? Leave a comment with your thoughts, and don't forget to like this video if you made it this far. Also, check out my last video on Bitcoin price suppression and this week's Swan Signal with Alex Thorne to learn more about Bitcoin supply and demand dynamics and the infamous gamma squeeze. Until next time, Bitcoin is peace.